I decided just a few seconds ago to do another tunnel talk here because even though traffic leaving uh, Dorchester going a couple streets over was like nothing coming up on here into the connector onto 93 North just before said tunnel I see a ton of congestion that kind of actually both directions you can see yeah so and it's at 6.32 on a Wednesday night, January 3rd, actually. I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes it can be, it can be when people get out of work, you know, it can be like the evening. But generally, when I head back this way, right after the same account, it's maybe just a little less than half this congested. So I'm guessing there's something, there's probably maybe a car accident up there ahead that's slowing traffic down or something. Or a stalled vehicle that people are having to go around and it's causing backups or something, but you know. And I did actually buy, which I know will help with this series, a mount right there, but I believe I gotta reposition it. Because even though it swivels. There's, I haven't found like the nice sweet spot where I can set the phone, where I can see myself and then switch back and then see a good view of the road. So I'll have to play with that and then just see, see what I can get. Jay Giles band, now the Eagles. I'm not sure what their call letters are, but it's really the probably the best classic rock station that I find around here and and right here in Greater Boston and up in Woburn it comes in amazingly clear so I just leave it as my number one preset right now. So I usually either listen to this or as some of you have heard on some of the other videos I've done, I do a lot of W E E I ninety three point seven sports talks. So. Even though in the mornings uh, they've chosen pretty well not to do sports, they just talk the way they the way they spin it, which works. They get they get high ratings. They win in the ratings battle, and, and it's still it's still a good show. Even though yeah, there's certain times, especially when there's like a like if the Sox made a big trade or they're on the verge of signing a big free agent or something. That yeah, you want they want the discussion on it. And instead, they'll be talking something completely different. It can be a little frustrating, but... but some of the dialogue back and forth is pretty cool, though. Yeah, we're literally creeping here. Show some of the traffic on the other side, which is still, yeah, that's pretty well creeping too here. Get over my spot. I like this lane right here. That way I'm not getting in and not interfering with the traffic that comes up there and tries to merge in when the rightmost lane of the tunnel ends. That, that can be a pain right in the ass sometimes. But speaking of the Sox, yeah, I saw reports in the last couple days that the Sox have made a five-year offer. I'm not exactly sure what the average annual value is, and I'm sure nobody really does, or just speculation. It's probably approximately, there was a car yeah, off the side of the road here, a couple cars. Not that. Maybe it had something to do with it, but... But it sounds like, yeah, they're standing firm. They made their offer. And they're just sitting back, saying, like, nope, this is our... Believing that there's no other team is just going to step up and go to a six years or seven years. 
And I know the other sticking point for JD himself is that he doesn't want to DH. He wants to, he wants to remain an outfielder. But I mean, it's it's ultimately up to him. I, mean, I know, yeah, Scott Boris is his agent, but Scott wants, of course, his cut. But ultimately, JD needs to decide what he wants in a. Maybe I'm, yeah, of course I'm biased, obviously, but but I believe that if he does sign with the Red Sox versus some of the other teams that have been rumored and may have been interested in him, that the World Saving Headquarters did not like that sign, um, he would have a better chance, I think, at getting a, a ring. Especially if he does DH most of them. I'm sure they would rotate him in the outfield. When some of the one of the three outfielders they have now who need a day off, you know, they want to rotate in and out. You know, which of course you know happens. You need, you need to do that in the regular season. Although the baseball purist in me though says, you know, I, I like you know when you look look on the back of a baseball card and you see that somebody played in all 162 games of the regular season. Rarely see that nowadays. Even some of these connector roads are all tight, just bumper to bumper. Just I see his brake lights coming in. So, but we'll see. You have to see if the Sox maybe went out, maybe just they're holding out. He doesn't get any other better offers, decides to take it, and that's a win win because then we'll have some money left over as long as they don't keep spending. And then next year's free agent class is just insane. So they can make a couple moves there. Some of the savings that they're gonna have. So. And by not going over the, the cap and hitting the penalty. Interesting bumper stickers on this car. Skull. Not sure what SSEC stands for. But now that we got light, I can actually turn back this way for a minute. It just was it's too dark when I when it's when I try to film, you know, at night without putting like a dome light on, which it's just not good for the you know the drivers, it's gonna be distracting. You know? So but I don't think yeah, I think with this one we're not gonna go all the way through the tunnel. Because we started the talk a little bit earlier, so yeah. So um, Brian Griffin signing out.